February 30th at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, there is a wedding shower on February 1st from 2 to 4 uh, for Megan Green and Ryan Parton. And this will be in the Fellowship Hall, and they're registered at Bed Bath Beyond, Kohl's, and Walmart. I hope you get a chance to be a part of that. Uh, don't forget also, ladies, helping hands. You'll meet on Thursday morning, January 29th at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And all ladies are encouraged to be part of this. This is the first meeting, and it'll be a planning session for the, some other uh, activities for the 2015 calendar year. And the service project for this month is the uh, Huntsville Hospital Hospitality House. And if you have any questions about getting involved in uh, helping hands the ladies there, you can see Sue Works, and she'll be glad to, to welcome you to be a part of that. And don't forget as well, our monthly fellowship meal will be this coming Sunday night, and uh, we'll be uh, recognizing the uh, December and January birthdays and also honoring our first responders. So this will be the EMS and police and firemen, and uh, Service Team 2 will be uh, in charge of hosting that. I think I said this Sunday night for the fellowship meal. Sunday night, I think. Last Sunday night of the month. Uh, we'll look at our calendars. Uh, anyway, I think that's all the announcements I have this evening. Uh, song 67 again, song of encouragement. And uh, Steve Hollis will have our closing prayer. Tim. I'm going to be reading, if you'd like to follow along. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Normally, when we think about our lives, we are interested in the things happening around us right now, current events. We want to know what, uh, what Congress did this week and what's going on in the world in different places. Well, sometimes we do. We may not think about how certain things in the past have affected us or what took place then that was important still now. Proverbs, I mean, uh, Jeremiah 23 is one of those places. Start reading with me in the first verse. A little longer reading than we typically do on a Wednesday night. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel, against the shepherds who feed my people, you have scattered my flock, driven them away, and not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doings, says the Lord. But I will gather the remnant of my flock of all countries where I have driven them, and bring them back to their folks, and they shall be fruitful and increased. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking to the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper, and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he will be called. The Lord, our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. But as the Lord lives, who brought up and led descendants of the house of Israel from the north country and from all the countries where I had driven them, and shall dwell in their own land. The prophecy of Jeremiah comes in an interesting time frame. Jeremiah was the last prophet to the people of Judah. Judah was about to be carried away to Babylonian captivity. They were going to be gone. God's land brought the children of Israel into and given them is going to be left desolate for a time. But Jeremiah, even before the children of Israel or Judah are carried off into captivity, delivers this prophecy from God. And God says, I will bring them back. I am going to raise up. They're going to have last king in Judah. And he's going to be carried away into Babylon. But God says, I will raise up another king. This king, this king will be over the kingdom of David forever. The promise that God made to David one of your descendants will be on the throne forever, was not fulfilled by Solomon or Rehoboam or any of the other list of kings in the Old Testament, but rather it was fulfilled in Jesus of Nazareth. We are citizens of that kingdom, and Jesus is still our king. When he was asked in front of Pilate, are you a king? And Jesus says, I came for that purpose, and I am king. As Christians, we may from time to time forget when we think out about our involvement in the world. We may remember that we're citizens of the state of Alabama. And we may remember that we're citizens of the United States. But time to time, it may be that we forget that we are citizens of the King. The King of righteousness. The Lord. Our righteousness. If you're a Christian this evening, 
You need to be obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus came to bring this message that our sins can be forgiven and we can spend our lives with eternity in Jesus' home, in God's home. If we believe that Jesus is the Son of God and would change our lives in repentance and be baptized for the mission of sin. It may be that you're tonight a child of God but not faithful. You need to come home to renew your allegiance to the King. The invitation is for you. Tonight, if we can assist you spiritually, come and sing.